Yes, and welcome to Train Simulator 2018, where you follow me, an absolute noob at train driving, as I learn how to bloody drive these things. Now, if you haven't seen the other parts of the series, be, be sure to go check those out first. Part 1 and 2, we learn how to do important things like starting and stopping, and also some of the secondary controls like wiper horns and all that sort of stuff on the train. Now, if we jump into the academy here, the next thing on the list that we're going to do is switching cabs in the DMU. So let's go ahead and select that, and I will catch you when we get into the cab. All right, here we are. We are in the class 170 diesel, multiple unit. In this lesson, we'll learn how to switch between multiple cabs. And we know to close it off like that. We know that. Okay. When a train reaches the end of the line, it must turn around and head back the other way. Funny that. To accommodate this, modern trains have a driving cab at both ends to save having to physically turn the whole thing around. Makes sense. Our train has just arrived into the station and we're gonna and we are at the buffers. Oh, those that's what those red things are. Okay. To head back the other way we must cha change ends. Alright, so far so good. To do this now, do this now by pressing control and plus or minus on the keyboard. Boom. Oh, minus maybe? Boom. 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 Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Plus or minus. Next cab from the action menu. Hold on, is it in here somewhere? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're back and we've figured it out. We had to actually close, if you look in the background there, we had to close that, that action box first. But as you can see, control minus or control plus and you switch between the cabs. Cabs, as simple as that. Really, that's a pretty basic tutorial. Let's get on to the next. That was quite difficult considering <laughs> How simple that was really let's be honest Academy right next one is electric switching cabs I'm picking this could be very simple all right the BR 189 electric I'm picking that this is gonna be exactly the same is it okay when a locomotive is shunting wagons it must run ahead of the train then turn around to accommodate this the modern locomotives have a driving cab at both ends okay we know that shunted forward blah 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 Okay, so it's exactly the same deal. Okay, boom, boom. There we go. Tutorial complete, is it? Maybe. There we go. Okay, that that could have been just one tutorial where they said, hey, this is the same for all trains, anyway. Okay. Let's get into the next one, then. Let's see, what have we got? Oh, this one's got three yellow bars, everybody. Or orangey yellow. Advanced Brake Systems. Could be a bit hairy this one. Let's get into it. Oh, here we are. Welcome back to the cab of this SD70 Mac diesel locomotive. In this lesson, we'll learn about advanced braking system. Complete each action after closing these messages. See, if I had read it properly, I'd know to do that. Here we go. This locomotive is equipped great spelling with three different brake systems depending on requirement. Wow, that is not good. Independent, auto, and dynamic. Brake types. The independent brake control systems only on the locomotive itself. This is used in running the locomotive only. Okay, so that's that makes sense. The auto brake system controls along which controls systems along the entire train. Long trains can mean this brake takes a long time to react, so planning ahead is crucial to slow down in time to stop. Okay, I'm hearing you. I am hearing you. Brake types. The dynamic brake works by reversing the polarity of the motors causing them to slow down. Similar, similar to the independent brake, the dynamic brakes only have an effect on locomotives in the train. Roger that. Multifunctional displays or MFDs. The MFD on the right displays information about the air brakes. There we go, ER. As the auto brake is increased, the equalizing reservoir, we're starting to get technical now ladies and gentlemen, drops from 90 PSI to zero. Once the ER is set, the brake pipe or BP slowly decreases to match the ER value. Okay. All right, 6 of 14. This is a decent tutorial. Multi-function displays. Applying the auto brake also increases the brake cylinder, which goes up to a maximum of 65 PSI. Okay. And there's the actual braking force. It's only affected by the BP. If the BP reaches zero, there will be no longer any pressure to apply the brakes. To recharge the BP, the auto brake must be set back to the release position. 
Okay, that makes sense. It sort of charges it back up. Holy moly, look at this. Tr look how big that train is. The longer the train, the longer the brakes will take to apply and recharge. The brakes cannot be gradually released and recharged. Any usage will discharge the BP, which will not start to recharge again until the handle is set back to the release position. Are you all with this, guys? Look down the bottom here. I think those are all carriages by the look of it, and it is a long train. Okay, feeling a bit nervous about this one. In Train Simulator, the auto brake is set to medium difficulty. Continue the lesson at this level to get used to it. Once comfortable, try this lesson again at a different dif at different difficulty levels to find the one that is most comfortable. Control Shift plus one will increase the difficulty, and Control Shift plus two will decrease it. Okay, let's try stopping this train. Remember, Control plus one to increase, Control Shift plus one, I should say, and plus two to decrease. To stop the train, push your auto brake handle above to the minimum position. Auto brake, is that this one or that one? I can't remember. To the min position. This one is it? Yep. Uh, oh, min, min, sorry, it's minimum. Oh no, I'm having a shocker. Not there, no, 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 that's on full. That's on full, I need to go back. The R has dropped from 90 PSI and the BP is slowly decreasing to match it. The BC will then increase providing actual braking power. Remember, now that the brakes are applied, changing them even slightly will completely discharge the pressure. Well, I don't want it on there, I want it on minimum. Why won't it let me do it? As indicated by the speedometer, in the middle of the MFD, somewhere this thing here, uh, the train is now slowing down. Okay, it's the needle. However, due to its length and weight, it will not stop quickly, even from this low speed. Understanding how long it takes to stop is a crucial skill for the engineer. How the hell are you supposed to know that? Won't let me change it. I've got it on way too hard, haven't I? Is it? Let's look at the MFD here, guys. Are we going down? We're not doing anything. We're still moving. I know it's slowly going down. This big beast that's going to take a while, I'm guessing. Man, this is taking a while. But then again, when we look at it, look at this train in here. Look, there must be about 30 carriages on there, maybe more. I revved this up too much though. Look at that, I put it right forward. I should only really have it at minimum. But I shoved it way forward. Anyway, I think we're continuing to slow down. We're down to 15 now. God, this takes a long time. Pull the emergency brake. How about no? So this is on medium mode. I think I quite like medium mode. I don't want to go hard. I'm too much of a noob. Let's have a look at si outside the cab, shall we? Look at this. That's right at the end by the looks of it. Wow. Hold on, let's just keep... Have what other buttons work here? That one. Oh, look at that. It's a, a top view. Eight is another top view. You can go like this. What does nine do? Oh yeah, that's right. Zero. No. Four. Three. Okay, back. One. Back inside the cab. There we go. This is the one we want. And we are grinding to a hot halt. We overshot that station big time. If that's where we're supposed to stop, it is not good news. We're down to two miles per hour or kilometers per hour. I think it's miles, is it? I can't remember. Look at this. We are just about down to zero, everybody. 0.9, we're hardly moving, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, this could be a success, we haven't crashed, 0, 0.0, woo, beat the horn, where is the horn on this thing, I've forgotten, here it is, it's a beautiful thing, alright, we did it, what do we win, do we take the brake off now? Yay, the train has stopped. This concludes a lesson on advanced braking systems. Woo! Oh man, that was a bit of a mission, wasn't it? Academy, all right. Next one is DMU stopping at stations. Oh, well, we must well carry on to that one because that sort of relates to the brake system. So let's go ahead and see if we can stop at stations. Okay, we are back. And it's automatically gone to this view. Look at that, just ticking along quite nicely. Now this is going to be an interesting tutorial because 
This is the bit I've always wondered. How do you know when to start slowing down if it takes a while to stop? Hopefully that will answer, this will answer that. Welcome back to the cab of the Class 170. In this lesson, we'll learn how to stop at a station at low speed. Okay, that's cool. Stopping at the right place on the platform is crucial. Yep, when to start braking is affected by the weight and speed of the train. The aim should be to apply one brake force all the way to a complete stop for a smooth ride. Yep, that's what I'm, that's what I'm wondering. We're approaching the station at 25 miles per hour. Okay, so this is miles per hour down here. This is only a small train which will not take much to stop. When you reach the end of the platform, apply notch two braking. Okay, so I'm gonna use that notch. I could use this little thing here, maybe. Which, what's the best way? Do you use this one here, or I'm gonna use this one? to the platform there we go ah it, it shows you braking zone until the camera reaches a forward view slowly push to power control or forward into the braking zone until the camera returns to a forward view okay Whoa, boom. there we go two notches back up to a forward view someone needs to clean that window no one looks after the academy trains and look at that we slow down and we stop quite comfortably that was a smooth stop this concludes a lesson on slow speed stopping at stations i've got to say that was pretty basic. Back to the academy. Okay, let's have a look here. What have we got? We've got loading, unloading, loading back. Okay, what we'll do there, guys, is let's wrap up this particular tutorial right now where we learned how to switch cabs, which is pretty easy. Um, the advanced braking system, which is going to take a bit of getting used to, particularly with a full load. And then we moved on to stopping at stations, which was at low speed. That seems pretty basic if you haven't got too much uh, or too many cab. Uh, ca can't get it right. If you haven't got too many... Uh, wagons on the back or what do you call them I've completely forgotten anyway that's what happens when you're a noob but anyway we're starting to learn a few things here so thank you very much for watching make sure that it's carriages is the word I was looking for carriages there we go make sure you smash the like button down below subscribe if you're new throw some comments down there if you know what you're talking about throw some comments down there even if you don't know what you're talking about and in the next tutorial we'll cover off some of these other ones here we've been load and unload load passengers will be pretty handy and a few other things but hey thanks for watching everybody and until next time take it easy